There's a mistake that's so painstakingly obvious, yet even rank 1 pros are making it. So we're willing to bet that you're probably doing it yourself, no matter your rank. We've all had those games. Permanently low on health, scared to press a button due to the risk of dying on GCD. It can feel completely hopeless. So it's often said that playing a melee is just easier. You can just sit on a target, spam your buttons, and you're going to always contribute something. Whereas casters, on the other hand, have a much harder time, primarily due to the fact you're very prone to being shut down, especially when coming up against multiple melee. Now, you're not necessarily wrong in thinking this, especially in modern day arena, where even if you expertly fake an interrupt, you're just then met with one of 14 other micro crowd controls that almost every class seems to have nowadays. It can feel incredibly frustrating. Like, why do I even bother playing a caster? I bet if I just re-rolled a melee, life would be so much easier. And if this is you, then you've come to the right place, as you're about to learn the most effective strategy that any caster can abuse to gain rating. And trust us, it couldn't be more simple. In these types of games, the difficult pill to swallow is the fact that it's actually yourself shutting you down, more so than the melee ever even could. To test that theory, we're going to play you 18 seconds of two identical scenarios, one from a low rated caster and one from a higher rated caster, starting with the former. Straight away, we see the Shadow Priest expertly faked Pummel, cast a Vampiric Touch, and then drop somewhat low on health before then using Fade and a Power Ward Shield to try and stabilize. Then uses Psychic Horror onto the Warrior combined with a Silence onto the Healer. Looks like a fairly common scenario that I'm sure everyone watching can resonate with. Now for the higher rated game. Snoopy, after being charged first, uses Fury of Elune, Root Beams the Enemy Priest, pops Incarnation, spams some Star Searches, gets some more dots out, knocks the Priest off, and then when forced low, uses Renewal, Shadow Meld, and Prowl. Conveniently in both of these clips, thanks to the add-on Trophy GCD, we were able to see what global cooldowns each caster used. And in a whopping 18 seconds, despite the clip looking nothing out of the ordinary, the low-rated Shadow Priest used a total of three global cooldowns. Snoopy, on the other hand, used a total of 16 GCDs. Now, we've got two different specs here, so it's not a perfect comparison, and you can definitely attribute some of those globals to higher haste. The point remains, though, one of the biggest mistakes casters make time and time again is that they just don't utilize as many button presses as they should be. World of Warcraft as a whole is by no means an APM heavy game, and we're definitely not saying you should be trying to maximize your APM like a StarCraft pro. But how do you ever expect to win a game when in a single game, your opponent could potentially be using five times more the amount of button presses than you are? This feeling you've all experienced of being shut down can often be greatly attributed to more of a mental block, and why this happens is down to a few different reasons. Before we get into it though, if you seriously want to climb rating, nothing is better than our brand new Master in Minutes product on our website skillcap.com. We take the highest priority skills you need to learn to climb the ladder fast, and then break it down into a step-by-step -step course of bite-sized 1-2 to two minute videos that are easy to understand and digest. So while you wait for your next solo shuffle game to pop, you can learn everything you need to climb. And that's not all though, as every week we release brand new arena commentaries where rank 1 players teach you how to win in even the trickiest of matchups. Seem too good to be true? Well don't worry. We're backed by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill caps, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rating you've always wanted. But now, back to the video. One glaring reason for not using enough globals is like we saw from the Shadow Priest in our first clip, in that they're just not putting enough value on instant cast abilities. Using the Shadow Priest example, the only spell you really need to cast is Vampiric Touch, and even then you can still apply it with Damnation and Shadow Crash. Outside of VT, you can use Devouring Plague, Instant Mind Blast, or even Instant Mind Spike procs. Then you can also look to use all your instant crowd control, or even look to get out damage by just applying Shadow Word Pain to different targets to fish for more procs, or even spam it on the same target for the additional single target damage output. And we're not done there, you could even look to purge some buffs with Dispel Magic, or use some utility in the form of a Power Word Shield for instance. All just so happen to have been options for the Shadow Priest we watched earlier, as he has 80 insanity, both instant damage procs to use, and even all his crowd control. making use of instant cast globals is of course not only something unique to shadow priests or balance druids. Every spec of warlocks has some instant damage or utility, be that from conflag, shadow burn, doom, dread stalkers, agony, corruption, curses. Mage has spell steel, fire blast, cone of cold, nova, barrage, ice lance, and tons more. Even devastation of ochres have azure strike, shattering star, emerald blossom, pyre, expunge, the list could go on. And it's the same for every caster without any exception. Utilizing these instant 
podcast is a surprisingly difficult skill to hone, as in a lot of cases, they don't feel as important nor impactful as casting otherwise would. And in a lot of cases, that's correct. It's always better to cast if you can, but for those times where you're not wanting to risk being interrupted, times where you want to reposition or move around the map, or even situations where you feel like you're too pressured to even begin dealing with interrupts, you should never find yourself in a situation where you've gone extended periods without using a single global cooldown. And we guarantee you're making this mistake. In fact, we suggest you download Trophy GCD and record your games. Pay attention to how many globals you're missing in every arena, compared to any high-rated player of the same class. And put this entire theory to the test for yourself. You'll be able to quickly tell this is one of the main reasons why you're struggling to climb. The second issue we see with casters alongside not utilizing enough instant globals is that you're just too scared of interrupts in general. Sure, there are sometimes very valid reasons for being so, like you don't want to get killed without being able to use a defensive cooldown, for example. But in a lot of cases as a caster, you'll see that pummel's ready on Omnibar and make it your mission to try and fake until you've got that kick out of the way. This can of course have varying results. Sometimes it works out and you can cast immediately, other times you're stuck there faking over and over. Even then though, just like we see here in this clip from a low rated demonology warlock, as you can see they're being trained by two melee. When they do go for a cast, end up just getting rebuked. Now this is fine, good in fact. From this point, you could queue up a hand of Golden straight after to even potentially fake that as well maybe. Then just like that, both interrupts are out of the way and you have around a 10 second window of free casting. But here's the problem, instead of queuing up another ability straight after, or even just casting after the lockout, our Warlock just spends the entire time jumping around aimlessly. He's not kiting, he's not avoiding damage, he's not repositioning, nothing. Then doesn't try and cast another spell until around 30 seconds later, and all because they got stopped on the one cast they tried to do. 90% of the time interrupts are just not something you should even worry about. Pro players get interrupted all the time, the difference being they attempt to cast and don't let the sheer thought of being interrupted dictate their entire play. Every single caster in the game, again without exceptions, so yes even Arcane Mage, has two or more schools of magic to work with. It doesn't even only have to be globals spent doing damage. You can cast, tank a kick, then look to use a utility spell, cast an off heal, you name it. You can also look to bait or force kicks on different schools of magic to what you want to avoid being interrupted on. So baiting a kick on Frost and going for a Polymorph, baiting a kick on Mass Dispel and casting a Vampiric Touch, baiting a kick on Fear and casting a Chaos Bolt. Just get into the habit of when you want to cast, do so then immediately just queue up another spell on a different school of magic straight after. You're still going to be contributing far more than just faking over and over, or even worse, not even attempting to cast anything at all just because kicks are ready. And if you do want to fake, then make sure you're doing so by interrupting the cast with an instant ability so you're not left with these huge gaps of contributing absolutely nothing. Remember, there's no reason to put interrupts on a pedestal and let them dictate your entire gameplay. They're honestly not as scary as you think. Hopefully by now it's clear that there are multiple simple yet effective ways to improve your gameplay as a caster, but they all require you to utilize your entire toolkit. Doing so as a caster is undoubtedly hard in Arena, especially inside of Solo Shuffle, and can take months and months of practice. Well, we fast-tracked the entire learning experience at SkillCap.com with our epic class courses that teach all of WoW's fundamentals. Our class courses are designed around concepts we discussed in this guide, like maximizing damage when being trained, or even learning how to efficiently trade defensive cooldowns. No matter what, all of our lessons are designed alongside the world's best players, and teach you everything you need to know to learn PvP as fast as possible without being overwhelmed. So if you want to learn the tips and tricks needed to climb, then take advantage of our rating gain guarantee today. We wouldn't offer this promise if our guides didn't work. Check the links in the description below to get started. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.